Today's staff collection training is going to be on the 1946 Whizzer Model K uh, motorcycle. Um, the Whizzer uh, was first introduced in 1939. Um, the Whizzer clip-on bicycle engine represented the time when uh, motorcycles were really bicycles with motors uh, added on by the owners. <coughs> um, World War II threatened to stop all production of Wizards. Um, however, um, Brianne Taylor, the corporation, sold the Wizard division, um, and the new owners convinced the War Department that its motors would help defense workers. Um, commutes uh, without wasting gasoline. Uh, the resulting new model was sold to defense workers only for the duration of the war and was one of the only new vehicles uh, available in the United States at the time. Uh, 1946 saw multiple changes for, the Wiz uh, for Wizard as the U.S. economy shifted from war production uh, to civilian products. Uh, the company moved from Los Angeles uh, to uh, Pontiac, Michigan and introduced the Model H uh, which was the last wizard model to use uh, use the lever uh, for throttle and clutch rather than the traditional motorcycle method um, of twist grips. Um, over the next 10 years, somewhere between um, 350,000 and 500,000 uh, 500, uh, wizard engines were produced. Um, and this specific uh, uh, wizard model um, was loaned to Alsip Transportation Museum on March 23rd, 2002. Uh, by a man named Dean Westover, and has had its loan renewed uh, multiple times ever since. Mm -hmm. <coughs> All right, so as, as Jonah said, these were kit motorcycles. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, kit motorcycles. You bought an engine, you had a bicycle, you assembled it, you rode it. Or, um, like this one, this is a Schwinn frame. Uh, Schwinn bought out the Wizard uh, motorcycles. Uh, the motors, but they never put the two together until 1948. Um, so you could buy a Whizzer engine from Schwinn, you could buy a Schwinn bicycle from Schwinn, but until 48 they didn't put them together. After that, you bought a motorcycle similar to this. Um, Jonah had said um, these were wartime production, they were produced without stopping, um, fuel efficient, they didn't take a lot of materials to build. The only other vehicle at that time that was a uh, wartime prediction uh, yeah, wartime production that did not stop was a Cushman scooter, which we have one over there. Um, they were deemed fuel economy, um, reliable, good transportation to get workers back and forth to the factory. So um, that's kind of cool. If you can ride a bicycle, you can ride this. It is a very non-intimidating bike. This is actually one of our funnest motorcycles that we have here. Um, it's, not, it's not one of the most valuables. It's nothing really special. It's just a really fun bike to ride. So. Schwinn also owned one of our largest motorcycles in our collection, the Henderson Company. Uh, so the Henderson Company was made by Schwinn as well. And uh, so these two motorcycles do share um, some DNA. <laughs> to, to operate this bike, it's very simple. You have a choke here. This is your clutch, which releases a tension on a belt. Um, there is no clutch like a car with pressure plates and things like that, it's just a belt. And this holds tension. So you spin the motor over, you get it rolling, you release that and it'll pop and it'll start and it'll run. Um, you do have a decompressor here. There's a little generator on the side over here. This is an exposed flywheel, which at this time, most every other motorcycle, except for uh, Moto Guzzi and Douglas, had completely enclosed flywheels. Um, it was better for balance, it was cleaner, it was safer. This still had an uh, exposed flywheel, and there's a little generator on the side with a rubber wheel on it that you would tip into the flywheel, and it would spin and it would generate your electricity for your headlight and taillight. Very simple system. Um, girder front end, which bicycles at that time, you could get girder front ends on them. And, which is similar to ABC we went over a couple, couple weeks ago. Um, again, Jonah had mentioned until 19, uh, uh, 1946 and earlier had thumb controls for your throttle and your clutch and such. Well, this, this is a 46 and it has a twist throttle. Toby had made a good point. At this time, the transition, there's a chance that there were parts everywhere. World War II, they're trying to build product. Um, they took it, they put on whatever they had to build these bikes, build these kits. Um, no two pre, no two assembled wizards are the same. They were, they were basically, you would buy an engine kit, you'd have a bicycle, you put it together in what you thought was the best motorcycle package. Um, so unless it was a factory built production bike, they weren't, there, there were no two that were the same. And restored bikes, there's a lot of them out there, restored. They don't have huge value, three or $4,000. Um, but the restored bikes are usually the vision of the person restoring it, what they thought it would have been in the 40s. So um, if, if you just go online and look at pictures of 46 Wizards, 
I don't think you'll find two the same. I actually was doing it this morning because I was looking for hand controls. And uh, hundreds of pictures, I didn't find two that were the same. No rear suspension, rigid frame, you have your seat or your tire pressure. Let's see, let's see what I'm missing here. Um, oh, Green Taylor, the founding company of Wizard, built aviation components and carburetors. So that's, that was their main claim to fame, was aviation and carburetors. It didn't list, uh, or I didn't get into it deep enough to find out exactly what they made specifically for aviation, <coughs> uh, but carburetors were one of their big, big products. When were these uh, discontinued? When did they stop making them? 65, the original. Um, and then in 1995, a company brought back the wizard name, made some, uh, made some newer models. You can actually go on eBay, Warren and I were talking about this morning, you can go on eBay, buy a Chinese knockoff of this engine for 100 bucks, go to Walmart, buy one of those cheap mountain bikes, and you could kind of build a semi-replica of this for a couple hundred bucks and, and have a blast on it. Um, but there, if you go to Wizard's modern website, they do say, coming soon, new designs. <coughs> I don't know how old that is, but they still have a website that's active that you can you can buy parts for. So, um, so uh, James Dean, his first motorcycle was a wizard, which is kind of cool, a little piece of trivia. Um, the king of cool. And in 1952, Wizard started producing um, windows and kitchen appliances. As they were fading away from the motorcycle uh, line. Um, one thing I will tell you about these motorcycles, uh, someone in this room can verify this, but these do not jump well. <laughs> they, they drive, they, they are significantly faster than you would think uh, for what it is. Uh, 35 mile an hour, maybe, motorcycle. Um, yeah. I thought it jumped rather well. I mean, I got in the air and I landed. <laughs> Six inches. Um, but yeah, this is this this comes out most of our events, most of our shows. Um, and anybody that can ride a bicycle and wants to ride it and demo it, have at it. I'll show you how to run it. It's a fun bike. Gas and go. There's there's nothing special to it. Um, you know, it's strange. It's it's a fun little bike. You know, it's weird. My mom saw this. I don't know where she saw it. I think it might have been the World's Fair. Yep. And she like was obsessed with it. She just fell in love with it. Yeah. She didn't drive, she didn't ride a bicycle, but she wanted that. Very non-intimidating. It was just, yeah. and when I saw it in the museum, it was like, wow. So it's just one of our events and drive it around. Yeah, I'm gonna, I, I think I might take you up on mm -hmm. that. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's all, I've, all I've really got. Does anybody have any other questions on this? Hey, Ron. Yes. Did you have to modify the frame to add the engine? No, actually, if you guys come over, um, when you look at this, Everything is a clamp-on, um, little B-clamps, clamp-on, and uh, you can, it's, it's adjustable. All of the bracketry is adjustable so you can get in there the way you want it. Of course, you'd have to find a bicycle that had a frame big enough to take the engine, but once you did, it was easy. The rear pulley is just held on with screws and washers on the spokes. And so when you get looking at it, it's, it's kind of sketchy, but it's held up well. <laughs> oh, man. Did they call them motorcycles or motor bikes? Yeah. Motorized bicycle. Motorcycle later on in years. Pee Wee Herman rode one. Pee Wee Herman rode one. Yeah. I like I like the James Dean rode one more, but yeah. Pee -wee yeah. Pee -wee yeah. Pee -wee yeah. <coughs> excuse me. Did they add a speedometer to it? This one does have a speedometer on it. You know, I've never actually paid attention to it while driving. This one shows 450 miles, uh, 454 miles. By looking at it, that looks fairly accurate. It doesn't look like it has a, a lot of miles on it. It's very clean. I don't think it's been restored. I can't answer that for sure. Did it run off the tire or the hub? Or? The speedometer? Yeah. It runs off the front. front oh, yeah. It's got a pickup. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know it was hard. What if, uh, is it ours and where did it come from? Uh, this, uh, oh, yep. Uh, it is on loan, and I don't remember where it came from. Yes, the wizard was. Um, question I did not I honestly didn't write that down myself I, I would assume three two three horse uh, that's purely an assumption yeah I don't I didn't have that either yeah um, 
We have failed you. We apologize. <laughs> Uh, four cycle, four cycle, four cycle. Yeah, uh, that's actually in Warren's office. I picked one up when we were in Hershey a few years ago, just never got it on there. Keep forgetting about it. Yeah. And, uh, Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Come and check it out. <laughs>